I thank God for the pandemic. And I told the churches, hey, wake up. This is what the end time looked like. This is a glimpse of the future. And it just validated everything that we are doing. Uh, and what I love about this pandemic is the fact that there's an urgency. And people realize us, they need to be the church. Okay, we have equipped them with home Bible studies, but there's no urgency for them to go teach them. Now there is an urgency. There's a catalyst. I, and I believe the pandemic is just a wake-up call for churches. Come on, I'm coming back again. This is not going to be it. Welcome to the Hacker Podcast. My name is Greg Hackathorn. I hope you all are doing well. If you follow us on social media, you would have seen that last week, we eclipsed 10,000 downloads of the podcast. That is so amazing, and obviously, it is because of all of you listening and sharing the podcast. Like I said in the 50-episode celebration, I was happy that anyone would listen, let alone people from 29 different countries all over the world. It, it, it's amazing to see, and I'm just so grateful for every one of you who download and are sharing the podcast. So far in 2022, our listenership is up almost 50%, which is really cool to see, and it is our desire to do our best to provide you consistent quality content that will help you in your walk with God, and we will endeavor to do that even more this year, and hopefully by the end of the year we'll be adding video content along with the audio content that we already provide. Today we are blessed to be joined by a great leader within the apostolic movement. I'm so excited to have him on the podcast today, uh, Pastor Timothy Lee. He is the pastor of Tabernacle of Joy in Singapore, which is an amazing church, and many of you would know about Tabernacle of Joy through the missionary that went there a number of years ago, Reverend Stephen Willoughby. In actual fact, Singapore comes in number four on the list of countries where our podcast has been most downloaded. So thank you to all my friends in Singapore. We went there in 2019 and met so many of you, and I'm grateful that a lot of you are listening to the podcast. Pastor Timothy Lee is the founder of AxNet as well, an apostolic church management system, which we talk about today, the POS. We are users of this system, so we wanted to share it with you and talk to you about it today. He recently spoke at the Movement Conference hosted by FAC in Maryville, sharing on a lot of what he's going to be talking to us about today, so we are blessed. We're excited to have him. I've been trying to organize a time for him to come on. He's a busy man. He, he, he does a lot, and we were finally able to get him on the podcast, and you will not be disappointed by this conversation. But before we get to it, we have a couple five-star reviews that I would like to share with you. Not one, but two. We have two five-star reviews to share here today. This one is out of Australia. It says, Brilliant Ministry Resource. I have been so richly blessed by this ministry resource since its launch. The combination of hack monologues as well as guests on the show make for a compelling and valuable podcast. I will pray that this channel continues to reach as many people as possible that it might inspire them in the same way it has for me. That was from friend of the program, Brother Greg Wilmot, and you would recognize that name because he's been on the podcast not once but twice sharing his wisdom, and I'd want to thank him for leaving us that great review. Thank you for not only being on the podcast but for supporting us and listening. This other review comes from the States. Uh, it reads, Excellent. Listening from Ohio, USA. Love hearing about the Australia District UPC. It's always been a pipe dream to live or at least visit Australia, and this is as close as I can get. That was from username JHFSS. There was no name. Hopefully you're listening and you're able to recognize the review that you left. Thank you for joining us in Ohio, and we look forward to seeing you in Australia one day. Make it Make it happen. Come out here and visit us, and we, we would love to see you. Come to Sydney. It's the best city in Australia. <laughs> the Melbournians are, are going to be filthy with me about that, or the Brisbaneites, or those from Perth. Uh, but Sydney's the best. We all agree. we got the Opera House, the Harbour Bridge. So come and visit the POS here in Sydney. 
It's been great seeing the reviews start to come along the last few weeks and all of the ratings as well. I don't want to forget that because there are a couple platforms that don't allow reviews. It's only ratings and I want to thank you for doing that, those who listen on Spotify. But yeah, the, the ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts have been great to see. And keep them coming. Have some fun with them too. If, if you want to make some jokes, make some light of it, feel free to do that. They don't all have to be serious, but uh, we do enjoy any reviews that you guys leave, as long as they are five stars. <laughs> we also love hearing from you that listen. You know, maybe through the reviews is one way, but another way that you can connect with us is on Facebook and Instagram. And you can leave us a comment on YouTube. We have a number of people who listen on YouTube, so it'd be great if every once in a while you leave us a comment so we can connect with you one way or another. Well, now that all of that is taken care of, let's get to my conversation with Pastor Timothy Lee. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for allowing me to be here. I'm so excited for this conversation. I've been meaning to have it with you for a number of months now, ever since we launched the podcast. Uh, it's always wonderful chatting with you and, and talking about the things of God. So thank you so much for taking your time today to spend with us, especially this week of all weeks. I don't know if the listeners are aware, but the week that we're recording is when you guys are presenting at the, the conference, the movement conference in, at FAC Maryville. Pretty amazing. I saw some of the photos today of of what they did to get you guys to be able to present. You're still in Singapore. You weren't able to travel over to the U.S., but that, that was really cool to see, and, and it's great to see that you guys are able to share uh, the message from Tabernacle of Joy to the, to the broader church community. I mean, it was such an honor that they, uh, you know, they could have easily chosen another speaker, but they wanted us to go down, just humble by that. Our goal is to help other churches build their churches. I think that's our fundamental feel at Tabernacle of Joy because, you know, we are not experts, but we also learn through this experience. And like, this is my first time doing a podcast, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, um, we want to learn anything that can propel the kingdom of God forward. We are interested. Yeah, it, I remember going over there. I think it was in 2019 when we first started migrating over to Axnet. And we'll dive into this later in the conversation. But uh, just seeing your guys' setup and, and all that you guys are doing over there, technology-based, uh, you're very forward-thinking church. And yeah, I'm just really excited to to pick your brain here and, and have a chat with you over the next hour or so. Great. I'm, I'm, I can't wait. Well, I like to start out these conversations on the podcast with getting to know a, a bit about our guest, a bit of their background, you know, sort of where they come from, uh, that sort of thing, how they found their way into church. So if you wouldn't mind, Pastor Tim, sharing with us a bit of your background and how you found your way into the church. Well, I think my background came before I met even uh, the Willoughby's or Jenny Miller. Sister Jenny Miller is the one that taught me the Bible study. You know, I grew up in a Christian school. You know, it was a Catholic Christian school and I always am drawn or by the story of the crucifix about the love of Jesus Christ, hmm. especially Jesus Christ. And I begin to learn how to pray in my own special way, you know, uh, the sign of the cross in the Catholic, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, ironically, you know, <laughs> doing all those things, you know. Uh, but there was an incident that really shook my world. My dad had a major illness, uh, hypertitis, and the, the doctors did not give us much hope. I mm. still remember on the dining table, the phone rang. The doctors was over on the other end saying, get ready. Your husband, uh, he told my mom that, my dad may not make it through the night. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember us being so shocked because we did not expect that. And my eldest brother looked at me, hey, you know how to pray, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, at that time, you know, I was trying to duplicate the Catholic church, you know, <laughs> putting candles there. I mean, that's my way of approaching God. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I went there for the very first time. I, me and my brother knelt down and prayed and said, I will give my life over to you if you were to save my dad. And immediately wow. the next day, it was a miracle. My dad made it and recovered. Oh. 
Oh, wow. You know, and then from that day onwards, right, I knew that there was power in prayer and I begin to learn in my own ironic manner, you know, to pray, to seek God, you know, and uh, uh, um, then I went up uh, as a teenager, you know, became rebellious because I felt like, you know, my good was never enough for my parents, you know, <laughs> so I went the over the other side, but there's still a soft spot in my heart for God. Mm -hmm. And then was seeking for answers. I still remember, you know, it was a wild night and all my friends left me alone and they went to do their own things. And I did not even have transportation to go back. And it was on the Christmas day, <laughs> or oh. Christmas Eve. You know, I still remember walking back from the train station and prayed. It's been a while since I talked to God. And I started off like, you know, greeting God, uh, happy birthday, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and then I was half drunk state, you know, I'm not proud of that, but then mm. I was really sincere and I tears came down, you know, in my eyes and I'm praying God, what's the meaning of life? What's the meaning of life? Never knew that God was orchestrating a bigger work, you know, and then I went into the uh, serve in the army uh, I had more brokenness there. God has literally brought me to a place of humility. I met a friend, okay, and I'm supposed to take over his duties, okay? He was, he's going out of the army and I'm coming in and he was keep bugging me every week. <laughs> you need to go to a Bible study. You need to go to a Bible study. You need to go to a Bible study. So for all those people that are reaching out to your friends, you know, don't give up. <laughs> you know, and Amen. finally I couldn't handle it anymore. Say, okay, okay, I go, I go. But I went there with a goal of debating with the teacher, okay? <laughs> you know, and, and it was Sister Jenny Miller. Those of you who do not know Sister Jenny Miller, she is, I mean, I interviewed her. She is, uh, uh, you know, she has baptized more than 3,000 people, wow. prayed more than, more than 3,000 people through the Holy Ghost. You know, she's a soul winner. She's in Parkway Apostolic Church. You know, she's still there. She, I consider her my mom. Mm. And she was very gentle with me and uh, she could give me an answer, okay, to every question that I ask. That's the beauty of a home Bible study because Amen. you know what? If, if, if we always have questions and we are not allowed to share or to, to get our answers, there's always doubt, Mm. You know, and doubt will lead to unbelief. Yeah, okay, so right. she gave me the permission to ask all the questions. And then I was intrigued that I began to want to become a Christian. And, and I started going to Methodist church. And, and uh, I, I still remember going to a Presbyterian church, you know, and then they made that altar call. And I was the only joker that's standing in the front. No one prayed <laughs> for me. And then I was looking, is this it? My goodness, you know, I really want to serve the Lord and then went to a Methodist. But at the same time, you know, I, I, I grew up knowing that I'm so sick of being a hypocrite, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, there are things that I said to God that I will never do and I break my word. <laughs> and, and I remember very clearly at that time, I was going doing a few things, Christian at that time. But the one meeting that I love to go is to... Uh, a home Bible study with Sister Jenny Miller. And then uh, when she talked about the Holy Ghost, <laughs> you know, I, I, I still remember that I was sitting on the edge. I said, you mean to tell me that after believing, I do not have the Holy Ghost? And then she showed me, I, I remember she was gentle with me. She was saying that, hey, it's not what I say. Let's look in the Word of God. Mm. Amen. And then when she brought me to the Word of God and the more I studied the Word of God, that's a part of me that, 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 that is angry. <laughs> Why? Because how dare these people tell me that I can live a Christian life without the Holy Ghost? Yeah, you know, that's, that's right. how I felt. And then, you know, at that day, you know, I was so hungry. My friend that brought me there was falling asleep and I was with tears reading the scripture. I was so hungry for this Holy Ghost. And, and, and I was literally, you know, when I was searching for God at that time, there was a turnaround when I started Bible study. I was going to two church services, you know, wow. finding God, you know, and mm -hmm. Sister Jenny did not even invite me to her church yet. <laughs> okay, I was wondering, okay, when were you invited? And then she finally said, hey, you know, why don't you come? We pray you through the Holy Ghost. And I remember, you know, going down the altar and there's a part of me that was crying out because... I'm so broken. I don't think that God can forgive all the things that I've done. I, I don't want to go through the list, but, and, and I was just broken. 
mm. literally broken at the altar. And someone said this to me, I've never seen somebody cry out like the way you cried out. I say that, hey, you have no idea what I've been through. <laughs> mm. And God gloriously filled me the Holy Ghost and I never became the same again. And that's how my journey began. It was a beautiful experience. I never forget it. You know, it was so real and I encourage every listener, don't underestimate praying people. You know, there are people that are out there that may not be apostolic yet, yet, but the scriptures say, ask and you will receive, yes. seek and you will find. There are still people out there. May, they may not be ready for a Bible study, but we don't give up on them. Mm -hmm. They have their own journey that they have to take. And sometimes this journey that they are taking, that God has to empty them out. That's what brokenness is, the Shiva factor. I think I, I, I've said this many times. One of the things that I look for in a leader is the brokenness factor, you mm -hmm. know, where people understood what mercy and grace looks like. <laughs> so they right. become merciful and, and they become people of grace. Amen. So that's something that I will never forget. And God is a good God. God will hear prayers before, you know, you are even born again. I thank God mm. for that. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, so that's, yeah, that, that's just how my journey began. And then I begin to meet uh, 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 Sister Jenny. And then I still remember talking about the God here. I say, so God is Trinity, right? And uh, I still remember Siddhartha asking the question, and God is the jealous God. So if I spend more time with the Father, the Holy <laughs> Spirit, and uh, Jesus Christ, do you think the Father would get upset? <laughs> and then she laughed because I, I, before I can even give myself to that faith. I need to know who God is. Right. I don't want to offend him unknowingly, you know. So though we were taught in a Catholic church that there is this Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And if all of them are jealous, I don't want to offend them. So, you know, I literally <laughs> took a time walk, uh, you know, in my ways of seeking God. I took, okay, you know what, uh, uh, Father, uh, I think my 15 minutes is up. I, I, I'm, I'm going to talk to uh, uh, Jesus now for a moment. And when Sister Jenny shared with me the oneness of God, I broke down and I cried. I see it. I see it. I see it. And I never became, I did not want to go any other church, you know, <laughs> anymore because I realized that the right doctrine is so important because right doctrine equals right living. That's right. So uh, no matter how big the church, how small the church is, the most important thing is uh, that I need to go to a church that preaches right doctrine. That's right. Okay, that's how I started my journey. And then, then um, it was Sister Jenny Miller. She was in Singapore first. And then she, she's always said this, that I, my gifting is never a pastor. So she prayed for someone to come to take the pastoral role. And then we met the Willoughby's, you know, and immediately, I think it was Brother Willoughby preaching the first time that I received the Holy Ghost. Oh, <laughs> and, wow. You know, so we connected right away, loved the children. We became babysitters. And there's such a fire in me, you know, that I wanted to always be around them, you know, and grew up with uh, Megan, uh, Barrick. And I was their babysitter when Brother <laughs> Willoughby is out there doing the ministry, loved the family, loved the kids. Barrick used to call me Titi. He can't pronounce Brother Timothy, so he would say Titi, you know, so... <laughs> It was beautiful, you know. I, I just thank God for that wonderful experience. And I think one of the things that hit me so hard is that here am I, I have a, this opportunity to be near a man and a woman of God. I want to learn everything that I can from them mm. so that I can grow in Him. Yeah. I didn't realize that that Sister Jenny Miller was there before the Willoughby's. Yes, Sister I hadn't Jenny put, was before. Yeah, I hadn't put two and two together there. So how old were you when you were born again? When all this was 21. taking place? 21. 21. Yeah. And then, so you're now the pastor of Tabernacle of Joy. How long have you been yes. pastor now? Well, I can't put a number of years, but I can say it's more than uh, 15 years. Okay. Yeah. And I've been serving in the ministry for at least 29 years. Oh, wow. So what was it like? You, you talked about it a little bit there with the Willoughby's when they came over oh. and, and took over the work there in Singapore. What was it like serving under Bishop Steve Willoughby? Anyone who 
listens to this podcast, pretty much everyone uh-huh. would know that name. And if they don't, I highly recommend that they go on YouTube and find a sermon or some teaching uh, sessions by Brother Willoughby. But uh, what was it like serving under I, an amazing man I think man it was like my, my, my spiritual father. He was real. If he doesn't have answers, the most brilliant answer he will give, I don't have the answers. Go hmm. look it up. Go ask someone else. He was wise to know that he does not have always all the answers. And he surround us, Tabernacle of Joy, with godly influence. Mm. Okay. Uh, what is it like serving under him? You see, I've seen Brother Willoughby grow as a man of God from a missionary with a church of hardly 20 people growing. And I, I, I see his prayer life. In fact, there are times where I'm, we will meet somewhere he will pick me up and we will go for morning prayers you know i remember those times and there are times when i fell asleep i felt so bad but i saw his prayer life and when you know he's really a man of prayer and secondly i remember you know the fact that he's real Hmm. authentic i think the word that i want to use authentic you know and uh and he he messes up he will come back and hey you don't deserve it forgive me and then uh and he was hard on me because I think he expected more from me. You right. know, there are times that I get upset with him because he's like <laughs> demanding things out of me. But then he look uh, when he deals with other saints, he's so kind and so patient with them. <laughs> and I was like, what's going on here? You know, and, and, and then I got to figure the reason why he is the way he is, is because he's a passionate man of God and passion goes both ways. When you are passionate about something, you know, you are fervent. <laughs> right. and, 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 and he dared to be real in front of me. And, you know, I appreciate that about him. I thank God that he was as straight as an arrow with me. You know, I still remember as a young man, I don't feel like leading Sunday worship. And I was the worship leader. You know, in, when you are a small church, you do everything. That's right. <laughs> From do. ushering to, to, to praise, uh, uh, worship, uh, uh, spray singer, uh, you know, worship leader, uh, Sunday school teacher. We do everything, okay? Yeah. So, and I still remember, I just don't feel like leading it because, you know, I, I'm just a Philly person, okay? And I remember calling him on a Saturday night, Brother Willoughby, I don't feel like leading worship tomorrow. And Brother Willoughby, Fervently or, or, or firmly, I would say firmly, he said, what do you mean that you don't, don't feel like leading worship? It's not a feeling, you know. You just do what's right, you know. And then he gave me a big rebuke. I thought he would be more understanding than that. And, and that woke me up. And then in the morning when he looked at me, he came over to me. I still, are you still leading worship? And I said... Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, because I was afraid, you know, the wrath of God, you know, the wrath <laughs> of Brother Willoughby. Just real immature at that time. And from that day onwards, he taught me a very, very powerful lesson. He says that when you don't even feel motivated to do the things of God or, or, or to do what's right, discipline comes in. Mm. Amen. We don't need discipline if we feel that uh, yeah. uh, we can do it, but, but we need this shut down all those things that is an obstacle and and we all need to learn to discipline ourselves and do what's right what is important is what's right you Mm -hmm. know sometimes doing what's right doesn't feel like a good feeling (laughs) (laughs) so you just got to do what's right so it was a wonderful thing uh, and then the beautiful part about how he will believe in uh your ministry in fact i still remember he calling up Pastor Mangan, he calling up all those men of God and introduced me formally to them and say that this is my Timothy. I want them to have access to you. Not only that, he 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 does that in front. And 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 I was just a kid, you know. And then even Sister Willoughby. Working mm-hmm. with Brother Willoughby is working with Brother Willoughby. And when you work with Sister Willoughby, she has also has another different style of working. Okay, Brother Willoughby is an orange blue. Okay, Sister Willoughby. She is a goal, okay? You know, and, 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 and you need to know how to work with her. So I really enjoy working both with both of them. And sometimes 
I am the mediator because both of them are right. <laughs> so we're trying to figure this out. It's a beautiful partnership that I've seen with Sister Willoughby and Brother Willoughby working hand in hand and that helps me in my relationship with my wife. Mm. And uh, Sister Willoughby is another thing. Oh, Sister Willoughby is straight. When she gives you a deadline, it's a deadline, okay? You don't stretch it. And she's kind to you, but she will not trust you anymore. You know, if you don't meet a deadline, okay? Sister Willoughby is like that. So, you know, she's like a prophetess, you know, she can read you like a book. And I, I took them as my parents, you know, I still remember the time where Sister Willoughby, you know, she was generous enough. And then uh, she did something that I will never forget. You know, she went, told Megan, you know, at that time she was a teenager, bring, bring Pastor to buy clothes. You know, I want to bless him. I want to buy him a suit. I want to buy him uh, clothes to wear. I want my pastor to look good. And I remember going for a medical appointment and I was just putting my head down because I'm there because I love her. And then she was stop for a moment and tell the doctors, this is my pastor. Wow. I, I was like, <laughs> looking back, who is Bishop here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then she was pointing right there. So Miss, their leadership didn't want this to happen. Mm -hmm. but God has bigger details. These are some of the questions that I don't understand, okay? Yeah. You know, that I got to put it in the room that why the Lord has taken them back home so early, okay? Mm -hmm. I was fine serving both of them. Never wanted to be a senior pastor. Never wanted. I just wanted to be a part of God's big work. So it was a very painful experience, you know, and yeah. it took me a while before I'm healed with my relationship with God, you mm. know, because I was, my spirit was a bit close to the things of God. And yet at the same time, I'm representing him. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, I, I, it was hard for me during those days because you're leading the group, but yet at the same time, you're bleeding. Mm -hmm. You know, there were multiple issues and, and, and immediately after they, they, they left or they passed, uh, sister will be passed away, then brother will be passed away. We lost our building, one thing after another. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a great way to start, right? Here you go, <laughs> senior pastor, here are the, all the issues and, you know, but thank God that God is good. There are many lessons. I realized that God was doing a deeper work in me that I, mm -hmm. I, I just got to trust him. Sometimes when my faith is down, you know, or when I don't have faith, I just got to trust. Right. Faith expects, but trust accepts. Right. So it was a humbling experience for me. I was trying to, here's he, some of the things that I did, you know, when I'm going to take over, you know, I, we did a quick renovation, okay, the whole building, okay, at Chinatown, beautiful building. We can sit around 400 to 500. So I did a renovation and I made sure that we, we renew our lease, right? If you will renew our lease, that means you're going to be around for some time, right? right. You know, so we renew our lease two years. So we renovated, we spent $50,000 in renovation and we enjoyed that for three months and they tear down the whole building. Oh my goodness. You know, so wow. God was showing me something. He said, hey, you don't make you, I make you. Mm. You don't make a name for you. Let me validate your ministry. Hmm. If you are always trying to validate your ministry, you will end up your whole life trying to validate you. <laughs> hmm. But when God validates you, everything is settled. <laughs> so I've got to learn some lessons along the way. You know, let God make me. I don't well, make me. Well, if you wouldn't mind um, sharing some of those lessons, what, what's some advice that you would give to a young leader like that, uh, that, is in that season of learning and, and growing and, and they might be sin, sitting under uh, a wonderful man or woman of God, or they may not. But what is some advice that, that you would give a, a young leader? Okay, the first thing is I remember we've been taught a lot about being under spiritual authority, you know, and I still remember uh, we having our BOTT in Singapore, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, Brother T.F. Tenney came over to me and said, Brother Timothy, let me tell you something. If you help this man in his ministry, God's going to give you a ministry of your own. You serve this man. Mm. Don't be looking around about what you're going to do. Just serve the man of God and God's going to give you yeah, your ministry. And, and look here, I don't understand why, okay? I don't understand why a bum 
Singaporean. You know, in Singaporean, we have a slang. We call those bums, abing, okay? I don't understand why that of all the billions of people that God would choose me <laughs> to sit around, you know, the, one of the most amazing things that I've experienced is that uh, was invited to BOTT. Brother Mangan invited me there and, uh, and I was in his home and I saw those legends of faith. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother Kugo, yeah. you know, Brother Ewing. I was like, uh, wow. Brother Woodward, you know, I, I'm just like, Man, me and my wife, who are we? You know, I mean, <laughs> we only see them. And then I just sat down there, God, I never asked for this. All I wanted is to serve you and love you. Hmm. You open so much doors for me. I don't feel even worthy to walk into those doors. You know, and, 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 and I was just, my mind was just mind blown. You know, you know hmm. I'm saying? like, I don't believe this is really happening. And I didn't ask for this. First of all, I didn't ask to be a mighty man. I asked to be an armor barrier. I hmm. asked that I will carry Bishop Willoughby's armor. I, I do not want to be somebody. As long as I can come into your presence, that's all I want, presence of God. And, and God has opened doors for us to know these people. Brother Woodward is one of my dearest friend, uh, brother Megan, anytime I'll call him, you pick up the phone, you know, and I'm, I'm just <laughs> thankful, you know, mm. that the Lord knows how to reward us in due time. Mm, that's good. You know, yeah. I, I, I think it's very important for a young minister to make sure that your heart is right. God, your heart. Your motives is so important. And sometimes we don't even know that it's there until God has to put us through a trial. Hmm. And then, you know, like what Rick Warren would say, human beings are just like tea bags, okay? Put us in hot water and see whatever comes out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, and, and sometimes we hate those trials, we hate those testings, but in these testings, God will reveal our true motives behind everything. Mm -hmm. And you need to be aware what's coming out from your mouth. Because of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaker. I, I, I say this, I, when someone asks me, how would you describe me? I say, I'm a work in progress. My family is a work in progress. I'm not there yet, but I'm striving. There are times I act like a jerk. There are times that I'm my worst behavior. But here's the thing that always gets me back to the porter's view. God's loving kindness. His mercy, his gentleness in his scripture says, David said this, his gentleness has made me great. And mm. God is still loving us, no matter what kind of bad attitude, no matter whether we think we are somebody, he, you know, he will allow trials in our life to let you know your place. And then the, the thing that I've always remember coming down the altar again, here am I again, a work in progress, but I want to allow you to do the deeper work in my life because I love you, because I trust you. I want to see you. Blessed are the pure in heart, but they shall see God. I want to see you. So the things that, be careful about success. Success gets into your head. Hmm. There's a simple prayer that I pray, God, I don't want to be moving in the gifts of the Spirit if you know my character cannot handle it. Please don't allow me because the gift is always, Bishop Willoughby said this, the gift is always bigger than the man. Mm -hmm. It's a constant struggle. It's a wrestling match. My walk with God, sometimes it's a wrestling match. Sometimes, I, and, and as you grow older, okay, you know, they say 30 years old, you want to impress everyone. You, you get everybody's opinion. As you grow older in life, you really don't care what people think about you anymore. <laughs> you know, the one thing that, early ministers or, or young pastors or young leaders, right? They want to get the approval of everyone. Hmm. You don't need the approval of anyone. You just get the approval of one God. And if that happens, if people around you start to approve you, praise God. If it's not, focus on that approval of that one audience and that audience is Jesus Christ himself. Yeah, that's good. To focus on on that, to make sure that you have the right motives, that your heart is pure when you're, when you're doing ministry. Uh, it's so easy to be caught in the weeds of ministry, to be caught in the week-to-week, the day-to-day. 
as you were saying earlier with with Bishop Willoughby, you know, you're tired, you're doing all these things. You're like, I don't feel like doing it. But at the end of the day, you know, we get back to that place when you get to that time between you and God and make sure that your heart is pure, your motives are pure. God will help you to stay disciplined, to continue to work and and develop your ministry. That's really good. Amen. Tabernacle of Joy is a very strategically placed apostolic church, and it has far-reaching influence in Asia. If, if you've ever been to Singapore, it's basically just one large city on an island and just surrounded by all these different nations, Malaysia, uh, and you got, I think, China's to the north, right, of Singapore? Yes, yes. Yeah, so it's sort of on the doorstep of China, but you have all this, it's sort of like a hub. You know, you guys are connected into the Philippines, you're connected to Malaysia, even to China. And and because of your guys' unique ministry, both you and your wife are fluent in Mandarin, right? You both speak Mandarin? Yes. Uh, she speak, she preaches in Mandarin, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I always check because w most of us assume it's Mandarin, but then the, yes. I had a friend years ago who he only knew Cantonese. He didn't know Mandarin. Yes, Mandarin. Yes. Right. So, so you guys have been st strategically placed in this area through Tabernacle of Joy. Can you share with us what God is doing in the region, in, in, the, in the Asian area? Singapore is very unique. Though. I think Singapore has a lot of allies in the Asia region. Number one, because of the free trade mm. that we have. All countries will come over. You know, we are the, I think, the bridge to the West. Right. Okay. You know, we understand how both country works, you know, and try to be a hub uh, to bring in those trading agreements and all those things. So I, I think in the spirit world, it's like the same. We understand the Chinese culture. We understand the Filipino culture because we have a big Filipino community mm -hmm. in Singapore. So we understand needs and the Lord has strategically placed us in a way that we have influence that we can go into the country easily I think the key word is easily for Americans. You got to get a visa for Singaporeans. We don't even need to apply for a visa to go China. Oh, wow. Okay. And we can speak the language, you know, mm -hmm. which helps so much. You know, so uh, yes, God has been blessing us. And we are very grateful for the open doors that God has given us in China. We will try to go China every year, but because of the pandemic, we have not been going there for two years. We've been training people, giving them systems, giving them translated materials. We are, always have a team ready for translation. We have probably six translators full-time, you know, at Tabernacle of Joy, but they may not be in Tabernacle of Joy. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in, in doing so, we are helping them with their ministry as well, because a lot of the companies are shut down due to pandemic and there is a shortage of work. So we provide them, the brothers and sisters around this region, uh, Chennai, uh, Indonesia, mm -hmm. you know, some of these places, we have translators that are on site and they are IT savvy. They will send us all the translated material. So we, you know, not only uh, see ourselves as 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 we are connecting all the different gifts together, okay? Mm -hmm. To focus on a common good, that is to get the gospel message or curriculums, training materials into the hands of people uh, from all languages. In, in fact, Asia is a huge, there are so many different languages, <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, it's unbelievable, but, you know, we are endeavoring to do our part to be able to provide uh, these countries with all the different materials. And it's amazing what Zoom can do. I never thought that I can do mission trip through Zoom, but I feel that I'm more effective during the pandemic because, you know, we never explored this area about training uh, for us to be there, you know, some of the things mm -hmm. that we need to do with them will require years of me being actually on the ground. Right, yeah. Right, but with this pandemic, it has opened doors where I'm meeting pastors, having personal consultation, counseling, uh, husband and wife counseling, you know, and, and, and I want to thank the show strengths because they have provided that avenue and bless us my family with their counsel and I'm seeing that happen duplicated in my life 
you know, with the different couples that have to deal with um, them, mm -hmm. uh, with their emotions, you know, their mental health issues and all kinds of the stress that they're carrying, the cross that they have to carry as, as ministers of the gospel. So this is what God is doing. We slow, you know, I'm drawn, especially when you have a young minister, don't know what to do. And as much as I love Bible school, the, there's a place in Bible school, but there are some things Bible school don't teach you. Yeah, of course. You know, and like about things like uh, dealing with lawyers, constitution, <laughs> yeah. and all those things and dealing with money. I wish that's more stated, you know, sometimes starting small group, there are two scriptures that talks about small groups and that's it. <laughs> you know, you know, X42, uh, X, X chapter 2, 42 and 46 and that's all. I wish there's more details behind it, but <laughs> there isn't. So we got to figure it out. And so from our experience, try to share our experience and what works at Tabernacle of Joy. I, I believe in sharing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know, one of the things that as a pioneering work at that time, and then we do not have an internet access. You remember, I, I don't know whether it's your time. You remember that when I buy a book like The Oneness of God, I have to wait at least two months for it to come. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, there was a famine in the land. You know, there's a mm -hmm. famine in the land in Singapore. There's not enough materials, instruction. There's no YouTube. There is none of those things. So we have to, I remember boxes of videotapes. So I, I told myself, right, as soon as there's a way that we can get this out, I'm going to be pioneering this. Amen. Yeah. Especially with people that are young, you know, that that looking for materials, don't know where to go, don't know what mm -hmm. ministry to look for. So we don't have all the answers, but we will connect them with the people. That's what the heart looks like. We yeah. connect them to the people who can do it. We have connected people to talk with uh, the show strands and so forth because I'm not a... Uh, I do not have the credentials, you know, so maybe I will link them to other people that are more uh, competent in that area. Yeah. So I see ourselves as a hub and I, I want to be a hub, you know, like there are times where we will link different groups of people up to connect. Mm. So I, I think that's what our role, and if we have any materials that is working for us, we want to share it, uh, especially our discipleship materials systems. Yeah. I, I think that's needed, you know, for the church. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna dive into that. But just before we get there, because you did bring it up, you talked about the power of Zoom and how you've been able to connect to all these different leaders throughout the region. You know, Indonesia, uh, Philippines, China. You, you've been able to do this, even though you've been locked down the last two years. Singapore, you guys have had very strict restrictions. Are you are you allowed to leave the country yet, or? We do. We are allowed, but not many countries, though. You okay, know? so it's so, quite limited. Yes. Yeah. So, so you guys have really felt the impact of the pandemic. Yet during this time, you've pivoted, and and I talked to somebody else uh, on the podcast. I think it was Brother Zuniga in that episode. I actually referenced Tabernacle of Joy and what you guys had already set up back in 2019 when I went there. You guys already had these really small groups, like groups of four to seven that, that you call care groups. So you guys had already had this sort of stuff put in place before all of this happened. What did you learn from this season? What is it that, that you learned during this season of COVID and all the restrictions and the way churches had to change and the way you've had to do ministry, even your international ministry has changed? Okay. It's amazing. Uh, I thank God for the pandemic and I told the churches, Hey, Wake up. This is what the end time looked like. Mm. This is a glimpse of the future. And it just validated everything that we are doing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and what I love about this pandemic is the fact that there's an urgency. And people realize us, they need to be the church. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have equipped them with home Bible studies, but there's no urgency for them to go teach them. Now there is an urgency. There's a catalyst. I, and I believe the pandemic is just a wake-up call for churches. Come on, I'm coming back again. This is not going to be it. Recently, I was just watching on, uh, on, on uh, the news. There's a new variant that's coming out, Stealth Omicron. It's not going to end. No, it's not. You know, and, and, and the Bible has prophesied this. And as the people of God, we need to understand that, hey, if 
They take down my building. How am I going to have church? If we mm. can't get it as a large, how are we going to survive? So, so during this pandemic, I thank God, number one, uh, it forces us to be the church rather than go to the church. Right. And we needed this. This is a, if I can call it an exercise to test our systems, where, where, what is needed and our care group leaders feel the urgency that, that right now that they don't have the support of the, 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 the midweek prayer meeting, they don't have the support of the Sunday service, that they need to rise up to the occasion. They, they begin to become more active in their, their, their leading rather than just waiting on you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and I see many young leaders rise up to the occasion and I'm so proud of them because they needed this opportunity. And I see in the last days, this would happen. Here, here's my philosophy. I support them. These are your small, small group, group leaders. leaders yep. The preachers. I support them. What mm. do you need? Okay, you need curriculums. Okay, I'm, I'm locking all this on cur uh, curriculum online so that you, there's a special course to teach you how to teach the course. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we will track you. We will get a 360 feedback from your students and then we're going to record you and see how it goes. I think support for the younger leaders is so necessary. You know, if mm. you want them to succeed, you know, don't just dumb it on them. Equip them. Yeah. Make them a success. Mm. And you got to have a training process that is always growing. Amen. <laughs> you know, I, I'm still learning, okay? I think the church is challenged that even at this age, I'm still learning about video editing, online streaming, you know, all kinds of stuff because, hey, who else going to do it? Because we are all locked down and I'm preaching from my, my table, you know, and I'm doing everything on my own. <laughs> I don't have a technical crew because the technical crew cannot come to my house. Yeah, you guys had to do, uh, I don't know how many months you had to do it, but you had to do oh, your services do just in your house, right? Yeah, one, one hour, uh, sorry, one year we are doing this. Just in your house? Yes. Oh, wow. And then everybody watching online. And then yeah. the small groups will gather them. And then the small group will see how they are doing, how accountability, you know, they discuss about my sermon, in what areas, you know, and then there's training going on. Folks, to be honest with you, I'm as busy, more busy in the pandemic than, <laughs> than when it's back, when I had an office. Because right now I know that this works. Yeah, yeah, because you took advantage of it. You, you didn't right. say, well, I'm just going to wait for everything to open back up, but you already had things right. in place. And then you're like, okay, well, how can I now maximize this? How can I use this to my advantage? And that's right. something that, that Brother Zuniga said as well, that they were doing. You know, they changed some things around because they're like, well, who knows? We might get locked down again. There's no uh, guarantee that you're just going to go back to normal and, and nothing's going to change. Right. And, and, and again, our people are already... If my system shut down, it happens before some equipment break down, Charles will get ready, Sam will get <laughs> ready. You know, every time when we have, uh, you know, we have now we can gather, but we cannot gather more than uh, 100 people. So we have to break up the whole church. So now we have like substitute speakers. So if the person, anybody can get COVID. <laughs> I mean, every morning yeah, we look true. at it, oh, pastor, pastor, yeah. I, I'm positive. You know, and when that's positive, don't worry, a substitute speaker is there ready. We have mm -hmm. all these men already, all good to go. Leaders are ready, you know, and this just validated the direction that I wanted the church to go. I wanted multi sites. I've always wanted multi sites, but you know, people just like to come together and sit and soak. They don't like something different, but now we have no choice and they will not get upset with me. <laughs> You know, because you got to be patient with the younger generation. Mm. They need opportunity, humility, open opportunity. Are you running multi sites right now? Like, do you have? Yes, we have. You, okay, we have three sites. You know, in FGF, they have five sites. So uh, we are doing everything we can. You know, smaller, getting everybody involved. The word that I'm going to use during this pandemic is this. Okay, we have killed a lot of sacred cows. Mm. Things that will not waste people's time. You know, a lot of things that we are doing in church, you know, if you ask me, I, I believe a healthy church is effective, efficient, and engaging. Right. Okay. In fulfilling the Great Commission, it's got to be effective. It's got to be efficient. Hey, we only got 24 hours. 
some of the things that we want to do will require more. And then when you take more out of people, what will happen? Your family suffer, right? It seems like you you guys have used this as an opportunity to sort of scale back on some things. Amen. And then, but then, it, you know, then also empower your yes. your younger leaders. So you know, it's not so centralized, but now it's become Amen. more decentralized. Amen. I'm my, here's my goal. You know, uh, my goal is to see churches everywhere. Because you know why? I love about smaller churches. You know why? Number one, they focus on what's really important because resources is limited. I have a friend that came over to Tabernacle of Joy. They look, oh, I love this soundboard. I look at him and say, why do you need this soundboard? You don't <laughs> even have people that's competent to use this equipment. Right. And I have to tell them, you know, hey, don't be like me. Be what God wants you to be. Mm-hmm. And the Bible says, if you are faithful over little things, he will give you more to be faithful, uh, to steward over. Right. Okay. So focus on what you can do. Don't focus on being, I, I, I say this, do not focus on trying to be a tabernacle of joy. Focus to be what God wants you. Comparing is never productive. Let me repeat that word again. Comparing is never productive. There are principles that you can learn, but we all have different starting points. Right. Assess I, your current reality. I, I heard today just randomly this stat that 15% of people's time is spent comparing themselves to other people. 15%, <sighs> one five. That's crazy. You're taking, you're taking over 10% of your day out comparing yourself to other people. You're not getting better. You know, <laughs> you're not focused on what you need to focus on. It, it, it's amazing the trap that we can fall into when we fall into comparison and, and don't understand that God has unique callings on our lives and and unique ministries for each other. And, and of course, Tabernacle of Joy is a, a, a wonderful example of a unique ministry. And I do want to dive into AxNet before uh, before we finish up here be, okay. because I love AxNet. I, I use <laughs> AxNet at the POS. And so... I wanted to make sure that everyone on the podcast heard about it uh, straight from the man himself. So not only do you influence Asia through through your ministry, through being able to travel and, and teach and, and those sorts of, sorts of things, but also you're impacting now the world through the AxNet church management system, as well as the Apostolic Academy, unlocking the Bible and living logos. <laughs> we could go on and on and on. Of, of all the, the great material that you guys produce and, and have provided the kingdom of God. What what drives you to invest so much time, money, and energy in creating and managing these materials and systems? Because I know firsthand through my relationship with you, you know, how much money you guys are spending, how much time and energy goes into this. Why why do you feel it's so important? Okay, first of all, you know, I believe in systems. I believe in getting everybody on the same page, communication and all those things, principles of communication, principles of trust. Sometimes there's a mismatch of communications and everybody's doing one thing because, you know, and cause a lot of mess. Now, I think 70% of why people leave the church is people's problem in the church. So mm. we got to sort of have a kind of system of communication. And I've tried many other softwares out there that is non-apostolic. I repeat again, non-apostolic. Right. You know, and, and I realized that it doesn't suit our need. In Tabernacle, job, we focus on a lot of home Bible studies. They don't even have home Bible studies. No, they they don't. don't even have fields that talk about baptism. I mean, Jesus' name, date for that. They don't even have things like uh, Holy Ghost being filled. They assume that it's the same thing. So you got to play around. We've been playing. We we we've been paying and paying and paying for something that I have to. Uh, I'm, I'm paying for something. So you got to serve me, not I serve the system. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? It makes no sense. Okay. So we decided. God opened the door for me to meet a friend uh, in Kolkata. I was there in, doing mission trip there and met this man, you know, he was a young man at that same time starting his business, gave him jobs here and there, trusted him, you know, helped him grow by getting his company to build simple web pages and slowly they grew. And then I challenged them more and challenged them more. And then pretty soon we are ready for XNet. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and I invested as as somebody because I also want to win that 
that that that that owner of that company, and I'm very close. Okay, I'm very <laughs> close. Okay, because he has his team watch my preaching. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. The whole team is watching over me. Okay, and and this relationship we have with this group of people is like 15 years. Hmm. These They are the software together. developers. Yes, in Calcutta. Yeah. And uh, we develop, we, you know, there are times, you know, I, I remember, you know, our old system, the very first system that we had, uh, we have to destroy it. Okay. I mean, like literally three years of investment, $80,000, oh. we have to kill it oh. in order for us to grow. Mm. Okay. Because that framework is for a traditional framework. It is not used for a general principle framework. I have to decide then. Then it was a heartache, <laughs> you know. But hey, I want to grow, so we're going to invest another few hundred thousands of dollars to develop the new framework that allows and empower people. The key is empowerment. Systems are there to empower people, not to restrain them. And we needed one. We redid the whole thing again. And then the next call. This is a big one. That God says, "Are you so selfish that you're going to share this with yourself?" Mm. I I could, you know, but the hackathon, you know, I could have just kept quiet. <laughs> and and I realized that a lot of church issues are because of the lack of strategy systems, not the curriculum. Mm. You know, so we decided to open it up to after testing it for a while in Singapore, everybody is loving it. You know, booking their seats. Everybody is loving it. The convenience of it all. Okay, again, we we said this. This is our design by volunteers, workers, people that are using the system real time, and they see the uh, you know the needs not from the programmer point of view. It's very practical. But here's here's the bottom line. Okay, of why we do the things that we do. We see needs. You know, we go to churches. We go to. It's not just about the material. It's not just me about setting up the platform and. Talk. You know what the problem is? The problem is. Dysfunctional, toxic culture. Mm. One of the things that helped me, okay, tremendously, uh, in developing this incredible software is the fact that when the programmer asks you, this makes no sense. Who do you report to? Who approves all these things? You know, and then when I start looking at at, at the the, the general principles, you know, I, he's asking the right kind of question. The programmer says this is illogical. If it's illogical, I cannot program it. If it's logical, I can program. If it makes sense as an organization, I can. So then, that's the big time where we sit down. We talk about, hey, you know what? We need to develop leaders here. Hey, we need to develop leaders here. You know those hard questions that frustrates me. You know, at the end of the day, became okay. I, I call it the frustration of a not thought through uh, a, a strategy. But now it forces me to think on paper. And it then makes sense, mm. and and I realized that many churches, their issue is not a, they don't have good people. They have good people. It's not about pitching. They have good preachers, but it's a system issue. Mm. Amen. That 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 we want to help pastors using when they start adopting this, they they realize the importance of collecting data. Why data tells you what's working and what's not working. Right. So then, when you come and do an evaluation, the reason why pastors don't want to evaluate is because number one, they don't have data mm. to prove what's working and what's not working. I mean, here's what Albert Einstein says: you know, it's insanity if you're doing the same thing over and over again and you are asking for a different result. That's insanity. Okay. So what we are trying to help pastor understand, and the very first time in my life. I understand what oversight looks like, because with all the data coming in, you know, numbers don't lie. Mm. You know, and then it forces us to think on paper: what's working, what's not working, what needs to be pruned, what needs to be fine-tuned, what needs to be cut back. Because I want to be efficient, effective, and I engage all the different gifts that God has given me as the people of God. To lose them, mm. 
So, you know, again, and, and, and it's very rewarding because everybody's involved, people giving data, people giving input, you feeling on the ground what's working and what's not working, and then you focus again, you focus again, because the thing that is always constant is change. Yeah. Let me repeat that again. The thing that is always constant is change. And we need to constantly have mid-course correction. Are we hitting our goal or not? You see, I, I want to pause for a moment and I want to remind all our hearers this reminder. It is God who gives increase. What I'm measuring is not the increase. What I'm measuring is my faithfulness to the things that has God has called me to be a good steward over. Hmm. Good stewards of people, people's time, people's resources. Amen. People's talent. You know, sometimes we are so guilty as pastors having program after programs after programs, right? And people don't have time to make disciples. Mm. That's so, real, you know, that's so good. And, and, and many of the programs are, are based on just, oh, this is what we've always done. We've always had this. We've always done these sorts of things. And it's like, okay, but has it been successful? And, and that's what uh, I love about uh, your guys' mindset over at Tabernacle of Joy and and what you put into AxNet, you know, we we were early adopters back in 2019, and just seeing the change that's taken place over the last two and a half to three years is has been incredible. Uh, it's constantly getting better. You're constantly adding things to it, taking things away, making it more streamlined. And for those of you who may not be familiar with church management systems, it's just a way for you to uh, sort of look after the members that are in your church. You can take attendance. Uh, you can monitor giving. You're getting all this feedback. You can uh, look after small groups, set up small groups in there, set up events, capture a- a- attendance of these small group events. You can do all of these different things as well as within AxNet. It, you, you can do that with any CMS, but when it gets to AxNet, it adds in this other dimension of discipleship and Bible studies and training. And that's what you don't get anywhere else. And, and that's why uh, yeah, I'm a firm proponent of AxNet and want as many people as can to to uh, support it because it's apostolic and you're not supporting it only because it's apostolic it's a great product and it's apostolic and one more reason why you know when you give to AxNet okay when you give to AxNet we will translate the we will translate every material to every language that we can find available and what's needed out there Okay, pretty soon you're going to see a new upgrade. Okay, that means if you were to buy the pro version when right now we have the pro version, which means that you can use our materials as many as you can. Okay, the pro version allows you to download and have how many ever teachers you want. Okay, but now we have included pretty soon. I think by this end of April, multi-language. So even though you buy that, that product is available in Mandarin, is available in wow, Tamil, that's Hindi awesome. at free of charge. Okay. So, you know, we want to make that available because we really believe that everybody deserves to hear the gospel. Yeah, that's great. That's really cool. And, and I'm looking forward to all the changes you, you guys are going to make. So if people want to find out more about Axnet, they just go to axnet.org, right? A-C-T-S-net.org. Yes. yes. And, and we have included a new platform, okay? It's called Learning Hub. You know, I want to introduce that where pastors can come and seek for personal consultation. You know, my time, you sit there and then I will address issues. Like, for instance, if, if your church is not IT savvy, what would you suggest? Things like that. How do I train administrators and so forth, you know? And uh, we may also include you in the future. Yeah, it's... Uh it's been great collaborating with you you all over the years and we hope to get you back over here and and our pastor will get over there and and uh, we'll continue this great relationship yes he mentioned uh, i think he mentioned the other day that that he's planning to go out to singapore this year is that right yes august yeah that's awesome and hopefully yeah. we can have you all back soon is australia on the list yet or no oh uh, we're still waiting on what our government will say, you know, mm-hmm. they are not saying enough. Yeah. So we really don't know the bit in between the lines, you know, what it really means. So, but I think by April, because 
we just got a whole new wave of Omicron uh, virus. You know, many people are getting in. You know, it hits to the 26,000 per day. And it's a good thing, okay, because the people will get, uh, we are yeah. reaching uh, herd immunity. But it will take a while. I Probably by June, we will be able to see something more positive. Hopefully, that would be great. I think you were one of the last guest speakers we had at POS before all this went down. I think it was February 2020 was the last time you guys were here. So You know, if I'm not mistaken, I went to Gold Coast and uh, even yeah, Brisbane. Did, yeah. Okay. And I did tell them what happened if the church, what happened if the church cannot gather and few days later it was shut down everywhere yeah. it was shut down you know a, a lot of people reminded me that you said this when you came and it <laughs> happened oh man yeah i just uh, you know throughout the whole thing i just remember our conversations that we had back in 2019 and you're talking about small groups and yes groups are so important you need to make sure that you got leaders within these care groups and so on I was like, man, they they were fully ready for this, and and thank God you were because, like, like you said, Singapore has been much harsher than, yes. than uh, a lot of the other countries. Well, uh, I want to get to this question. I like to ask anyone who comes on the podcast, any of my guests, what drives you when it comes to ministry? What is it that is that driving force for for Pastor Timothy Lee when it comes to your ministry? Okay, what drives me is. I guess when I hear about people going through pain, okay, you know, and, and I can identify with it. Sometimes when you go through pain, there's no answer. You just got to go through it. Hmm. You know, I'm drawn by hurting pastors. I'm drawn, okay, you know, their frustration as a church leader. People don't quite understand where you're going. And, and I'm, I like to take some of these people in, just drawn. I think that's the reason why this whole X system is developed because I have a burden for pastors is trying and they don't have the resources that they have. We have a bunch of Filipinos pastor. They can't even afford a subscription. Hmm. I gave it to them free because really it's not a money-making. My goal is not money-making, okay? But at the same time, you do know that it takes money to yeah, maintain of course, yeah. you know, a system, servers, and all kinds of protecting securities updates. So, yeah. but, but my driving force is that if I can help somebody, why wouldn't I want to help? Hmm. You know, Brother Willoughby said this to us, if you help other build their churches, God's going to give us our own church. Wow. So that's, that's the philosophy that drives us at, at me. Personally, especially when I hear parents struggling because been there before, my heart goes out to them. You know, I, I, I will help them with sharing my own story. Doesn't mean that, you know, one of the things that I've realized, you know, as a pastor, doesn't some of the saints would think that we are super spiritual, you know, untouchable, you know, no, we are just like you. Give us a break. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I, I don't want to act super spiritual, but I, I, I I want to act authentic. I want to act yeah. real with you. You know, yeah. life is tough. So, you know, that's my driving force. I, if I can help, I would want to help as much as I can, especially when I can identify with that issues. Yeah. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation with you. I knew I would, and uh, I really have. It, it's been an absolute privilege to have you on the podcast. And I, I hope someone is inspired by this conversation to maybe not necessarily purchase axnet but look into it and think about the systems that they have at their church and and think about what they're doing and are they being efficient are they getting the most out of the people that are involved in the ministry are the things that they're doing really what god wants them to do or are they or are we doing it out of tradition and i love what you're talking about when it when it came to covid and how it has stripped things back and it mm-hmm. brought us to a point where, you know, the main thing really was the main thing. We right. didn't have all these different distractions. It really, for months, it came down to, okay, well, are you going to serve me for just me? Are you going yes. to have these daily disciplines just for daily disciplines? Not so you can preach somewhere, not so you can do this, not right. so you could do that, right. but just for me. Uh, yeah, that's powerful. But in conclusion, I, I like to finish off these conversations uh, giving... Uh, my guest, the opportunity to share a word with the listeners, something that God has laid on your heart specifically for the podcast. So 
Pastor Timothy Lee, if you wouldn't mind um, sharing with the listeners of the podcast a word from the Lord, and, and thanks again for your time today. I want to share a principle that I think that really helps me. I have a dog, okay? I told you I have a dog. My low <laughs> is uh, it, his name. And I realized, you know, the greatest part of having a pet is that you are able to train them, okay? And um, I noticed something about Milo. Sometimes he gets so excited and he, whenever, every time when I open a door, the door, okay, I open the door, she would just rush out. Hmm. You know, and it frustrates me. He say, can't you just sit, listen? You know, and I, I feel like sometimes as Christians, we want to lead God. We are pulling the leash rather than he leading us. And this hmm. scripture brings a whole light to remind us. It's found in Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. Be still. It's hard to be still. <laughs> hmm. And know that I am God. Okay, let's pause for a moment. Let's think about this scripture for a moment. Be still, okay? There's so much cares of the world that we are carrying here. So much anxiety, so much worry about tomorrow, about our significance and, and all kinds of insecurities will creep up in our lives on a daily basis that make us want to just go out there and do. Mm. When God wants us to reflect, I am God, know who you are. And then he goes on, I will be exalted among the hidden. I will be exalted in the earth. So, you know, I've realized as a Christian, the hardest thing that we will ever do is this four-letter word, wait. W-A-I-T. God's delays are not his denials. We are so quick to make a name for ourselves. We are so quick to want to grow the church. Don't we understand God is calling us to faithfulness? And think about it for a moment. Okay, think about it for a moment. It is he who brings the increase. But what we are measuring today, especially in XNet, is not about what's growing. It's about what we are being faithful over. Mm. Are we faithful to the things that God has called us to do? So in prayer, the most important voice that you need to hear is God's voice. And there are times where I just got to shut up and be still. Waiting is having faith that God will lead us. If you do not, you don't have faith. <laughs> it's impossible to please God without faith. So this is a whole new, this whole pandemic, okay, we all have to wait, okay, the news, everything's coming up, okay, are they going to open up, are they going to shut down, are they going to open up, all of us are waiting on the news, you know, where all the ministers will come, the ministry task force will come, and we all eager like a, like a wild dog, you know, come on, say the word, and we will all rush and go, oh, uh, uh, book auditoriums, let's get together, let's have it, but we have been on the waiting path for a very long time. But in the middle of waiting, I begin to treasure things like family over ministry. I'm leading my, I, I'm reminded that my first small group is my family. I can't preach to them, but I've got to be a living epistle, leading them through the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of God the gifts of the Spirit. And for us to literally bear the fruit, we need to behold God's goodness. We need to be recipient and take time to allow God to show us His kindness and His goodness so that we can show others goodness and kindness. Have mercy to those people because God is merciful towards me. So that's one thing that I might take away from the year 2020 to all the way to 2022. Sometimes we need to do less for more. I know this is ironic. You're talking to somebody who's a workaholic who seldom sleep, you know, but, but I've learned to behold the goodness of God, behold the greatness of God. Take time to behold 
you know, I, I, I bought a book. I haven't read it, but I love the title, The Discipline of Beholding. I can't wait to just grab a hold of that book and read it. But I love the title, The Discipline of Beholding, Meditating, Marinating in the presence of God. Let it change us. Let it transform our heart because you and I can clean ourselves. It's under the presence of the Almighty God that we recognize that He is worthy to be praised. And that because He's worthy to be praised, we flow in the act of worshiping in spirit and in truth. 